Thank you so much. Um, it's really a pleasure and an honor to be here speaking with all of you about how to go about getting jobs um, before you graduate from university. So I'm just going to share my screen. And I'll get started. And this is meant to be a little bit informal, a little bit fun, um, and certainly going to highlight a lot of ways that you over your four years will consider um, how to best prepare yourself for a career path. Um, so I'm going to introduce some myths versus some realities about um, large institutions versus small institutions and how they can really set you on a path for success early on. Um, this is Ohio Wesleyan. We were founded in 1842, and I'll share some information about OWU, as we call it, as I go along. Um, but I just want to highlight this building right here. That's where the admission office is. So if you do end up being a student at Ohio Wesleyan, that's one of the first places where we'll greet you. Um, it's where a lot of the work happens behind the scenes. And it's also where you would meet with our international advisors, um, as well as uh, go to classes and enjoy the honors lounge. But let's dive right into the topic. Um, so one of the first myths that I want to talk about is that a lot of times students think that small universities and colleges really mean fewer opportunities. Many families might think, why would I want to go to a college that's only about 1,500 students or 2,000 students? They couldn't have as many opportunities as a huge university. But this is actually not the case. Uh, it's false. The picture behind this is our one of our telescopes. And one of the things that I'll point out is that Ohio Wesleyan, amongst the next genius students, is known for um, the astrophysics program and going to a small university like OWU provides you with valuable time on the telescope. If you were to go to a large university, you'd really be vying with graduate students for time on the telescope. But here students are working with professors. Um, he's, they're working with Har Dr. Harmon directly and they get to do hands-on things like um, working on the telescope, searching for planets and stars uh, right from the very beginning. And to give you an example of one of our astrophysics um, students who went on to do some pretty great things, Rachel double majored in math and astrophysics. And one of the things that you'll, you'll find yourself seeking out, whether it's at Ohio Wesleyan or other colleges or universities, are ways to build your resume, your CV, and ways to make connections and gain experience in your career field before you graduate. So at Ohio Wesleyan, we call them connection experiences, and we have funding for them. That's an essential thing to remember is that if you want to do research or have an internship, we have connection grant funding to help cover uh, equipment travel, living expenses, so that you can partake in these experiences. So Rachel's connection experiences that led her to her career, she was one of only three students nationwide to earn the Society of Physics Students Outstanding Award for graduate research. So she used her connection grant funds to present at the International Conference for Physics Students in Poland. She went on to get her PhD in astronomy at the University of Michigan, and she did postdoctoral research at Stockholm University, as well as Yale, um, studying star spots. So you can see right from the get-go that a small university didn't hold her back, and if anything, it really afforded her some fantastic um, experiences that led her to a really strong career path. Another myth is that Ivy League and really highly ranked universities or most the most famous named universities provide the best opportunities for students. And I can tell you from personal experience 
but that is not the case. I actually went and graduated from an Ivy League university, Brown University. And although I enjoyed my time at Brown University, um, my classes had hundreds of students. My professors did not know me. And in fact, I had graduate students teaching me um, for many of my classes. And I definitely didn't have professors telling me about opportunities for research and internships. But at a small university like Ohio Wesleyan, your professors will know you. They'll know you from your first year. The average class size at Ohio Wesleyan is about 15 students, and we don't have any classes over 35 students. So that means that one of the ways you'll hear about career opportunities and networking um, is through your professors. And that is one of the true advantages of a small college or university, professors who know you and can seek you out and say, hey, I heard about this amazing research project that's going on in the Netherlands. You should apply for it. And professors will definitely um, start kind of feeding you these opportunities from the beginning of your first year. So just to give you a visual, um, small liberal arts colleges versus medium and large research universities. Uh, this is a very typical picture for a large university. Sitting in a huge auditorium, how can, how can the students even see what's going on on this table here? Um, and you know, it's very hard to interact with a professor or raise questions, it can be very intimidating. But in a session, um, a class like this at Ohio Wesleyan, which is what all of our classes look like. It's very easy to engage with the professor, ask questions, discuss, share your opinion. And that's how professors get to know you through the class discussion. So there's much more discussion. There really are not very many lectures. All of our classes are taught by professors. And here's another way that you're really at a great advantage in terms of getting a job uh, when you graduate from a small college or university. When your professors know you, they're going to be able to write amazing letters of recommendation about you that talk about you not only as a student in the classroom or maybe as a researcher or a mentor or a leader, but they'll also be able to talk about you and your personal qualities, perhaps share some anecdotes about you. And those letters of recommendation will help bring you to life and help you stand out in the application pool for jobs or for graduate school. My experience when I went to Brown University and I needed a recommendation to apply to graduate school, I had to introduce myself to a professor and bring copies of papers that I had written several years ago and my professor didn't know me. So I can't imagine that my recommendation letter stood out amongst all of the other candidates. But Truly, when you attend a small college or university like OWU, you will stand out in those recommendation letters. The other way that you're really set um, on a great path is that you are being taught by professors who are dedicated to teaching. They're dedicated to mentoring. At a larger university, faculty prioritize doing research, they prioritize getting published, and they prioritize work with the graduate students. That doesn't mean at OWU that our, our faculty don't get published or do research. They do. But the benefit to you is that they seek out you and the undergraduates to do research with them and maybe to co-publish a paper with them. So another way that you really can help yourself on your career path is that um, you can use your connection grant funds to go to conferences and network and talk with professionals in your field, and maybe even present your findings at a national or international conference, just like Rachel did. Um, that does not happen at a larger university because there are tens of thousands of students vying for those opportunities and professors have no way to know who would be a good person to nominate them for speaking at a conference. So another way that you might be able to um, really enhance your career path to get a job or get into a great grad school is to um, consider attending conferences either as an attendee or even as a presenter. Um, so just to give you an example of how our students and professors know each other, um, I love this photo because Timur 
is a student who graduated in 2013. And this is actually him a number of years later after he graduated, he stayed in touch with his professor, came back, um, actually gave um, a talk at Ohio Wesleyan. Uh, but our students stay in touch with their professors and they create these lifelong relationships. His connection experiences included doing our summer science research program. He did research on nuclear physics. Um, he went on to graduate school at Duke University to get his PhD in physics. And today he's working at Apple on computer vision and self-driving cars. And what he says about his OWU experience is that some of the things he did still apply, um, those analysis techniques and the first research experience he had got him started doing research. So another way that you can set yourself apart and really um, strengthen your career opportunities is to consider doing research, which you can start as early as your first year at Ohio Wesleyan or at a small private college or university. So another myth that I've already debunked is that small universities don't offer research. Uh, we know that that's false. And as you can see from this picture here, it's very typical for our students to be in labs um, using state-of-the-art instrumentation, engaging in research at a very high level, and often research that graduate students might do. Um, here is an international student, Ishmael. He got to do research at the MIT and Harvard Broad Institute, and his research project was on Alzheimer's and neuroscience. So your research doesn't have to just be on campus. It could be at another university, which you could kind of let that lead you to going to graduate school at that university because you're meeting professors there at those labs. Um, so your research is not limited to just what you would do at the OWU campus or the other campus where you might find yourself enrolling. Another thing I want to dispel is that liberal arts and sciences colleges are for people who don't know what they wanna do. Rather, I would say that they're for anyone. They're for students who know exactly what they want to do. They're for students who have lots of interests but need to help, um, you know, find which path is going to be the best one for them. And um, there's really nobody that isn't well suited to a liberal arts and science college, except maybe a student who knows they want to be in a huge environment with tens of thousands of students. Um, but liberal arts colleges are for people who know what they want to do or people who are open to discovering um, what they might not know is going to be their future yet. And this example uh, is an international student who graduated in 2015, and he had two really different interests, computer science and economics, and he was able to use his connection experiences to help him land the perfect combination of a job that combined both computer science and economics. So his connection experiences included um, being an honors economics management fellow, um, internships in software development in Dubai and Cleveland. Um, but ultimately he decided that he wanted to pursue the economic side working at JP Morgan Chase in New York City. And not only is he a vice president at JP Morgan Chase, he's a technology analyst. So that's where his computer science and software development come into play um, to uniting the computer science and economics interests. So that's another way that a small liberal arts and sciences college can really um, you know, help you zero in on multiple interests, because if you went to a large university, you might just be in the school of business and not be able to really take a lot of computer science, or maybe you'll be in the school of computer science and not have access to business. But at a place like OWU, you can take both courses simultaneously um, and other classes as well. So another myth is that your major determines your career. That's not necessarily true. So you can come in and let, let me say, I know a lot of parents will say, oh, I want you to major in business. I want you to major in engineering. I want you to be a doctor. I want you to be a lawyer. Uh, that doesn't mean that you have to come in and major in pre-law or pre-medicine or business. 
you could actually major in business, do the pre-med track and apply to med school. You could actually major in psychology, but go on to law school. So your major does not necessarily determine your career. It's what you do with your major, the connections you make, internships you have, uh, maybe the research projects you work on that will shape what you do with your major. And a great example of a student whose major did not lead to the same career path is Dian Yi. She's an international student from China. She started out double majoring in geography and economics. And fast forward to today, she's working in climate change. So her connection experiences took her to Costa Rica. She did a travel learning course on environmental alteration. So that was where maybe the uh, geography piece started. And she quickly learned that um, more interested uh, in geography, what more of interest to her was uh, the environment. So then she went on to do research on ice sheets in Greenland. So she got funding to travel there. She got to take samples of ice core um, and that, really lit her up because she had that hands-on experience. She got a grant to present her research at a national com uh, conference and an internship at the Nature Conservancy in Beijing, went on to get her master's at Duke in environmental management, and is now working in London for climate bonds. So as you can see, she started out thinking geography and economics, but went on to a completely different career. And she's probably very happy in that career. So your education is more than just the classes you take. Um, your internships are going to connect you to real world learning experiences. And a lot of colleges and universities will say, oh, we offer internships to students. And they do. But it is up to you to seek out those opportunities. So whether you go to a small college, a large university, a medium-sized one, um, they're not gonna be spoon-fed to you. You do have to show initiative and seek them out. But the advantage of a small college is that you have advisors there. You have uh, professors who are making you find those connections and telling you about those opportunities more readily. Internships give you the opportunity to try out different career paths to see if they're a fit for your interests, your skills. Um, you might try out a, a career path, an internship, and say, ooh, I really can't see myself doing that for the rest of my life. So it's a valuable opportunity to, to do different internships. The other thing about going to universities that campus life teaches you lifelong lessons about teamwork, relationships, culture, respect. Uh, many of you will end up getting jobs on campus. And even if you think that job is just a way of earning some pocket money to help pay for books or travel, um, your campus job is valuable as well. It's something you can put on a resume and it gives you leadership skills. It gives you connections. It gives you real working world experience as well. Doing research with faculty creates knowledge in your own project. Um, it also shows employers that you're able to do research independently or with others. So definitely seek out those research opportunities. And employers seek candidates with real life problem solving skills who can succeed in a globally connected society. So that's why you want to seek out these opportunities and not just wait until your senior year to do them, but just start thinking about them your first your second, maybe your third year, as well as your senior year. Um, summer internships, mostly in Ohio or wherever you end up going to university, false. Your internship opportunities will be all over the world. Uh, Sophia, an international student, had an inter internship in Dallas for 10 weeks. Um, she interned for Citigroup in global consumer technology. She went on to go to graduate school at Brown University to get her Master of Public Affairs. And as I mentioned, um, internships don't have to happen just before your senior year. Um, your first internship can happen maybe what, a year after you've um, entered the United States. So you might not get an internship your very first summer because your visa might not uh, allow for that. But after your second year, you can start um, 
focusing on internship opportunities. And then I know we're probably coming to time soon, so I'm going to go through these slides a little bit more quickly. Um, your double major, if you decide to double major, it doesn't have to be related. As I showed you, Dian Yi um, double majored in geography and economics. So don't feel like if you have two real passions that they have to be related. Another example is Raisa, who double majored in French and politics and government. Um, and she chose to do research on global poverty, on migration, on urban housing. And she got grants from Ohio Wesleyan to travel and live and research during the summertime on all of those experiences. That led her to graduate school in Switzerland. And today she is working um, at a peace building platform in Geneva in communications and digital uh, series coordination. The biggest myth is that international students won't be able to get jobs. I know that's a huge fear that, stu that students and parents have, uh, but I have probably hundreds of examples of international students who are working not only in the United States, but all around the world as well. Um, oftentimes people think that they either have to go home or get a job in the US, but you could get a job in London, you could get a job in Switzerland, you could get a job in Hong Kong, the whole world is open to you. Um, but to give you an example of a student who's working in Boston is a student from China, graduated in 2011, majored in genetics and biochemistry, did summer science research at OWU, got his PhD in genetics, and is the senior research scientist in Boston at uh, Computational Genomics Institute. And he said that without hands-on research experience and rigorous coursework, he wouldn't have accomplished any of this. So just to give you a few more key attributes of liberal arts and sciences, we really strive to build skills. And this isn't just Ohio Wesleyan. These are all of the next genius institutions. We strive to build skills that will help you succeed in any career that you choose to do, because you're probably going to change careers over your lifetime. Um, critical thinking skills, communication skills, analytical skills, creativity, innovation, problem solving, it typically leads to nearly 100% of our students getting jobs. And these skills are useful to any career path and are something that you're going to get um, in any of the next genius colleges and universities. So how do you actually go about getting these internships, um, whether it's at a WU or at another next genius institution, we all have offices of career services. We call it the Career Connection at OWU. Um, the Career Connection is where all of the career activity happens, but career counseling is also woven into our curriculum. We have lots of partnerships uh, with academic affairs, with the admissions office, with student engagement and success so that um, all of us are helping provide input. The athletics program provides networking, Greek life. Um, we also provide opportunities during spring break and winter break and summer break so that you can maximize that free time to have a short-term uh, shadow experience. And then we have a lot of co alumni career partnerships as well. So this is how we do it at OWU, and I'm sure a lot of the next genius schools do it the same way as well. There are also career fairs, graduate school fairs. Uh, so that means that employers or graduate schools will come to the campuses uh, where you end up attending. So you can meet face-to-face -face with recruiters or you can meet face-to-face -face with graduate um, admission officers. There are usually um, speaker sessions. So you can come and hear uh, professionals come and speak and talk about their career paths. There will be resume building workshops. Um, there will be opportunities for you to do mock interviews. And there are always job postings on what we call Bishop Link and Handshake. And the Career Connection helps every student develop knowledge, skills, and experience that employers and grad schools value the most. And as I mentioned before in that previous slide, the ability to think critically, analyze complex problems, work in diverse teams, and communicate effectively. And alumni networking, that is going to be another great way uh, that you can 
find about uh, find out about jobs or get mentored by alumni. At OWU, we have programs like alumni and residents who come and stay at OWU and mentor students. We have lunches called Munch and Mingle or dinners with alumni. Um, we have externships during breaks, alumni panels where they come and speak at OWU, career webinar series, um, dinners with alumni, uh, Bishop Networking, and then, of course, LinkedIn groups as well. So I'm sure lots of colleges and universities have similar alumni networking programs as well. So your alumni office is going to be another source of jobs. And then they all, colleges always host things pretty much on a weekly basis. So it could be panels on women in finance, etiquette dinners, career summits, um, internship panels, and things like that. Um, resume writing, how to build your LinkedIn brand, applying to grad schools. So there are always going to be topics that you, uh, panels that you can attend, certainly in your senior year, um, junior year as well. So I think that's probably it for my presentation. Um, as you can see, we've got students all over the world in really wonderful, impressive places. So you don't need to worry about finding a job or a career path. Um, you've got advisors who'll be working with you all four years to do that. And um, that's it for my presentation. Thank you so much.